Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. We're making this coat rack. For more than a year now, I've been forced, when I'm in my shop, to put my winter coat onto the back of a chair. It's okay for the shop, but when I come inside the house, I throw that same coat onto the floor. René is always complaining about that, but not a rat. I only do it to make the rodent happy. I love that almost all the front of my shop is windows, because a lot of sun enters the shop, but I have no place at all to screw a hook to the wall without making it hard to fully open the door. So the only solution is to make a pair of coat racks. Something similar to this one. And this will be a nice project to make with Peter, one of my viewers who wanted to work with me. Peter also has a woodworking YouTube channel. You should check out his videos. Here's my lumber storage rack and this hunk, big hunk of cherry here is what we're going to use to make the patère with Elaine. He even brought a chunk of this nice piece of cherry wood to make the central post. Before leaving for Elaine's place, I used a circular saw to mill a square piece from this cherry log. It was tricky getting this one piece of wood into Canada. The border guard asked me a million questions about it before he finally let me and it into the country. When I was in Elaine's shop, he straightened it on his Wood Gears design jointer. It's cool seeing one of Matthias Wandel's wooden jointers at work. When my piece of cherry is square, we cut it to length. After marking the center of the blank, we place it on the lathe. Then used a dazuki saw to cut the corners of the post. This keeps the post from splintering where we turn the transition. Well, you can. I mean, there are guys that are starting to square. Next, with a draw knife, we knock down each corner. That draw knife was a pretty sweet find at a flea market. The border guard didn't mind letting me bring it into Canada. When it's not square anymore, I demonstrated to Elaine how to take the roughing gouge and get it round. Then he gives it a try. <laughs> I hang behind him and offer a little coaching from time to time. I brought along my sharpening wheel, so I put Elaine's roughing gouge to the stone and gave it a good bevel. Then he finishes the roughing with his own gouge. When the post is round, I make it smooth with my skew chisel. Next, we have a brainstorming session to figure out what kind of shape Elaine wants his coat racks to be. Once we have a design, we draw the shape on several sheets of paper, transfer it to a piece of MDF, and cut a full-size shape of the turned post. The 
Then I make sure it's smooth all around. With our new pattern, I mark the high spots and size the post to that dimension with a parting tool and caliper. Then both of us remove the wood in between the high spots. Well, we already know the low spots down there. Next, we mark the low spots and start shaping the post. For the bottom pillar, I want to try Elaine's carbide chisels. The last thing we do is turn the beads. Then Elaine sands the post. The square upper part of the post didn't have the right proportions, so Elaine cut some off each face with a bandsaw. The Japanese saw left some marks on the post, so we sand them smooth. Next, we're able to route the decorative cos on the flat surfaces of the post. You coming out? Yes. After that, Elaine removes the burn marks with a round scraper. And now we're ready to work on the legs. Before I arrived, Elaine has already started to work on the form. On a piece of plywood, I use two French curves to trace the shape I want the legs to be. Then I cut the shape, very close to the line. Next, I sand it smooth. I need more layers of plywood, so I cut this piece in two. Using my first pattern, I trace the shape onto the second plywood and apply glue up to the line. Then I screw both pieces together. After cutting the excess plywood, I flush trim my second plywood with the first one. Then I need to cut more plywood and repeat the same procedure two more times to end up with a form of four layers of plywood.
Then I cut it in three parts. I mostly do the same thing for the hooks mold. I couldn't finish them before Peter arrived. We have our form, but we don't have the strips to bend in it. So Elaine takes care of preparing the wood to make the strips. Then we cut a bunch of thin strips. Elaine uses clever little bearing to size each strip as he cut them from the outside face of the board. When we have enough for one leg glue up, Elaine spreads glue on the strips and together we clamp them to the leg's mold. The next morning, we unmold the leg and cut more strips for another set of legs. Then, just like we did last night, we glue and clamp the strips. When the glue is dry, I pass one side of the glue up over the jointer. This way we have a straight surface so we can cut two legs from one glue up. Then Elaine pre-drills some counterbore holes into the legs so we can screw them to the post we turn together. It was at this part of the build where I had to go back home. But at least I was able to have a better idea of what Lane had in mind for his coat racks. I had a great time meeting Elaine in person and working in his amazing new shop. If you're eager like me to see Elaine finish his coat racks, you'll have to come back for the next episode of The Woodpecker. <laughs>